Let's walk through the main event a little bit. I mean, once again, you guys uh, put on a fantastic show and the back and forth. Talk us through, we saw you guys go back and forth exchanging lead. What was going through your mind through the 20 laps? Well, uh, it was kind of a, of a roller coaster of, of thoughts, you know. Um, you know, when I, when I first got out, I, I saw Chad was in, in front, and I, you know, obviously, uh, like pretty much any of the, any of us up here, you know, you don't, and, and others as well, you don't really want to let anybody get out in the opening of the race. So, you know, I, I wanted to, uh, wanted to attack early and get up there, and, and I did, and uh, I didn't really get a chance to see him or, or, or race with him because he had the problem in, in the heat and everything. So, I, I was surprised at how easy I, I could run with him, and I wanted to wanted to go ahead and, and continue to put the pressure on and I wound up making the pass and uh, kind of flip flipped the coin. Now now he just kind of stuck on me and I had a couple lines that, that were a little bit different in the beginning part of the race and I think was uh, especially faster in the second whoops up up the kind of dragon's back thing and uh, he, he capitalized and I think I learned from from the few sections that I was faster and was able to uh, keep the pressure on and uh, when he got back by, I definitely didn't think the race was over. I was I was still ready to go, and uh, for whatever reason, just lost my drive and decided to back out of that one triple. And you know that was shoot, that was it. You know if you can't if you can't do the triple every lap, you know you're you're not gonna win. But I was very frustrated. But you know definitely better than casing it, which probably would have took me out of the night. So just split second decision to back out. Chad has a great reputation as being a smart rider and using psychology. Do you think that maybe his game plan with you is to attack the mental part of your game? He seemed to be putting a tire in every once in a while, especially on that turn before you reversed on the straightaway, and sort of hope you break you down that way as opposed to like wearing you out. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that he's a smart rider. I mean, you gotta you gotta be smart to to be up here. It's it's not just a matter of speed, you know, on this level. It's a, a matter of a lot of things, and you know I, I've been working working hard with with uh, you know all of my team and, and my trainer Greg and you know just just everybody and and I've also been been here with open eyes. You know I I can sit here and and watch uh, Chad's trainer over there write, writing stuff down. So it's it's quite obvious that that it's uh, <laughs> becoming a bit of a mental game. And yeah, that's that's a huge portion of of what we do. And uh, you know what what I say is not not going unheard and what he says is not going unheard and you know it's becoming now where you know it's not only about physical strength you got to go back and you got to work hard during the week and, and think uh, of you know mental preparation as well actually this is the last question from the podium I, I didn't read my notes correctly you had a moment where you had Chad up really high you had him up to the tough blocks on a berm right before the whoops into the triple no contact at all I mean was that Talk through that. I mean, of course, still there's buzzing about AMA and, and, and this. And there might have been a level of contact that would have been fine. I mean, he was really high up. But instead, you, you chose not to go up and make any contact. He hit, my boot. He hit your boot. That's important. <laughs> Be quiet. I don't, want, I don't want to lose any points. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was a good grace. And, and you know, at Anaheim, uh, you know, the three of us were, were riding. And I think that it was, was, was very, very, very clean. And I think tonight, I think that we've we kind of inched to where, you know, we, we were a little bit more aggressive with each other, but still have the respect for each other as well as if David was up there, or, you know, any of the guys. I think that, you know, that that the aggressiveness has to be there, and I think that that's what what keeps the crowd on their feet. But at the same time, you know, I, I don't want to be known as a dirty rider, and I, I'm I'm sitting here today saying that I'm not a dirty rider. It's just an unfortunate incident that happened once, and I don't suspect that it'll ever happen again. But the aggressiveness has to continue to have. Uh, you know, to great shows and, and, and great events here in Supercross. Uh, it's kind of the nature of the beast. Black, black passes are necessary, but, you know, I, I feel confident with any of these guys that, that we're going to keep it clean. And, you know, like I said, it's just unfortunate what, what happened in the past, but uh, I think we've all been professional about it and moved on. For the second week in a row, you waited to this, the back 10 of the t hard 20 laps to make your move. Is that a matter of strategy or opportunity? I think it's just a, you know, waiting for the right time and, and whatever, you know, uh, I got a great start, which was what I wanted, and and just kind of just rode around, and you know, Kevin passed me, and and then we just, you know, we, we went and battled, and you know, I saw the halfway line, you know, the the mark, and just kind of paced myself, and just the track tonight got really beat up, it got really rough, and you had to be careful, and you know, kind of <coughs> pick and choose where you, where you're pushing. So, uh, yeah, tonight just kind of had to wait, bite my time, and and go for it when when I thought it was right.